everyone. Another book club for women on the move. And this is Thursday, May the 16th. The year is 2024. And we'll first start with introductions. I'm Cindy. I'm Harriet. I'm Linda. I'm Melody. Hi, I'm Adela. Hi, I'm Sam. Hi, I'm Tammy. Hi, I'm Vivian. And hi, I'm Zadie. And tonight is my book, which is uh, called Bringing on the Blessings. And it's by Beverly Jenkins. And I uh, just wanted to give you a little bit about the author, uh, Beverly Jenkins. She was born in 1951 in Detroit. And she's an American author of historical and contemporary, contemporary romances. And if you noticed in the book, there was romances thrown in on that. And um, she, uh, she has uh, historical romances that are set in periods of African-American history that she believes is often overlooked on there. And Jenkins studied at uh, Michigan State University as a journalism and English uh, literature major, but her dream job was being a librarian. And uh, she was a li she lives in southeastern Michigan, and she was a librarian. And when she had time, she started writing books, you know, just writing, jotting things down. And she finally um, got one of her romance novels novels uh, published in 1997. And besides her romance novels, she has a blessing series. And Bringing on the Blessings is her first book in the series. There's 11 uh, books in the Blessing series. And so that's a little bit about the author. And um, if you notice that the book is in the town of Henry Adams in Kansas. So I was curious, is there a Henry Adams in Kansas? And there is. And... Um, I was like, and how did it get that name on there? Well, the town was established in 1880 and it was named after Henry Adams, uh, which uh, was born in 1843. And he spent most of his adult life in and around Shreveport. And he spearheaded what uh, could be considered the region's first civil rights campaign. And um, he promoted uh, full voting rights for free men in the years of emancipation. Uh, then he encouraged migration of the African Americans from the South to a more welcoming locations uh, following the end of uh, Reconstruction. And so in 1979 and 1980, um, he led a movement to establish black colonies in Kansas and over uh, 30,000 and they called them exodusters um, followed him and went into Kansas, Kentucky and um, some of the states around there on the migration. And, um, and 1880 is the year that my, and it would be my, um, not my grandparents, but um, they came out in, to California, to Bakersfield in the 1880s. So I guess they were part of the exodusters on there. But on the book, a uh, little bit, just a little overview of the book on there, on Bernadine Brown's 52nd birthday, she received an unexpected gift. She caught her husband, Leo, cheating with his secretary. She was hurt, angry, and, and um, but she didn't cry, woe is me. No, she hired herself a top-notch lawyer and ended up with a cool $275 million. Having been raised in the church, she knew that when much is given, much is expected. So she asked God to send her a purpose. The purpose turned out to be a town, Henry Adams in Kansas, one of the last surviving townships founded in free slaves after the Civil War. The uh, failing town had been put 
had put itself up for sale on the internet. So Bernadine bought it. Trent July is the mayor and watching the town of his birth slide into debt and foreclosure is about the hardest thing he had uh, ever done. When the buyer came to town, he, impressed, he was impressed with her vision, strength, and the hope that she want, wants to offer not only to the town and to its few remaining uh, residents, but a handful of kids in desperate need of a second chance. Not everyone in town wants uh, to, be, to get on board. They don't uh, like change, but Bernadine and Trent, along with his first love, Lily Fontaine, are determined to preserve the town's legacy while ushering in a new era and ties it to a unique past and its promising future. Okay. And why do you think she named the book Bringing on the Blessings? I can, I'll go first on that one because, oh my goodness, this book was just full of blessings throughout the book. It's like, it was a blessing for Bernadine getting $275 million. I'm like, woohoo. I mean, that was a, that was a first blessing in that first chapter, those two pages was like a lot happened there. So that was a blessing. Then her purchasing this town that was on the brink of bankruptcy and non-existence. That was a blessing for those individuals. The blessings that they offered in terms of fast forwarding to the foster children, look at all of those blessings. The blessings that the town members received from the foster kids, the kids themselves, the blessings. I mean, there were blessings throughout the book to the very last page. Yes, and just yes. the jobs that were created, people who were having who had who lived in the town, but there was an employment who were having to stay away and go outside of their town to work. What a blessing she was to them. So I mean, this book, the title was very appropriate. Yeah. Anyone? Else? I agree. There's nothing else that I could say after that. I was very impressed with the um, the blessings for the foster children who would have been. Um, otherwise lost to a system that sometimes isn't very caring um, for our foster youth. So I was extremely um, impressed with those blessings, not to mention the economic blessings that it brought on to everyone. Can I, I piggyback impressed. on Sam? I just want to piggyback on one thing. Not only was the foster children a blessing to the town, the town yes. was a blessing to blessing them as to well. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I just wanted to say, and in addition, Bernadine herself was blessed because now she had a purpose and she didn't have to uh, wallow in self pity or decide what to do, go off to Paris and hang with the girlfriends. This was a blessing to her. And the, the deeper she got into this thing, the more blessing she was receiving interacting with people, learning the rich history of this town, mm -hmm. getting to know all these wonderful people, the, the thing that was on her heart. She couldn't be a mother due to her trifling husband, but now <laughs> she got that opportunity to be a mother. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that to me, not only was she a blessing, but she got blessed. Amen. I think it gave her something that she longed for was just this tight family unit this reciprocal love and caring and compassion. friendship, passion and um, everything that tight family unit, a unit and to talk about all the blessings. I think um, sometimes you can bless someone for that moment, but this is going to be generational blessing. Amen to that. The other thing that I was impressed with is that she was also able to connect with the African-American community, um, given her lifestyle and her education. I think she had been removed from that, um, not necessarily on purpose, but by virtue of the things, the choices that she had made. And so it was interesting to note how, you know, she was a little leery of these people because they were so very, very different from her. But at the same time, 
um, their colorful stories elated um, her and made her feel connected in a very unique way. Exactly. And I'd like to add what, to what you said, Odella. She, even though she was a person of all of these means and, you know, she had money before the divorce, of course, but she was very down to earth. She was mm -hmm. used to the finer things of life, but she didn't grow up that way. Right. We learned that when she shared that with her foster daughter, I haven't always had, but having is better than, you know, being in the, <laughs> being in a rear. So it's like, she just loved the, I love the fact when she walked in on the, and went, went into the daughter's room and the daughter was sleeping on the floor because everything was so nice. She didn't want to get it dirty or get it messed up. And it's like, oh no, this is life. Wait until I take you to Milan, Milan in the summer and we go here and for fashion week, I'm like, get it, Bernadine. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like you already. <laughs> okay. Um. If you had unlimited resources, how or what would you do to help others? Well, personally, I love what she did. I think it was a fabulous idea because not only are you, you know, touching um, our youth who often gets overlooked and gets put into a bad situation just because some of the foster parents that are there are only then there for the money, not necessarily for the love of the right. child. Amen. But then it also helped our senior community feel like they had a purpose too, and that they could be remembered and their stories could be you know, remembered. And so it kind of gave a legacy. So I would have to say as something very similar to this, my husband and I both have a, a heart for this, but it just never quite occurred because we had four daughters and, weren't sure what to do with that but anyways <laughs> oh I'll share this this book, book really touched my heart because if uh if I was in a position with unlimited resources I know we don't have quote-unquote orphanages anymore but I would have a Miss Cindy's house where it would be a house where I had a I mean it's like maybe 20 or 30 children and I would just love all over them. And it would be a beautiful home where, you know, you're just providing for them. And I bring in resources where they have the best of everything in terms of education and in terms of travel and just in terms of exposure and giving children who don't have a family a family. One of the things that I, um, mm -hmm. having worked in the system, um, appreciated that she got the hard to place. She didn't get the easy to place. She got those very difficult kids that nobody else wanted. Um, and those are the children that are sometimes lost and fall through the gaps. So if I had unlimited resources, I probably would not have thought of what she thought of, but now that she has opened the door, that's an idea. And I, I think hers worked out very well for her. Definitely. And I like the, there again, I like the fact that she didn't try to get so many, but she knew that it's kind of like uh, when you go on, on the beach and you pick up a starfish, you can't help them all, but I can help this one if you throw it back. And that's what she did. Okay. What do you think about the foster kids and their situation, how they came? to her oh when I read Zoe's story it just broke my heart I had oh. to go back and read it again and just feel like oh I would have wanted to rescue her and you know even the with the horrific things she had lived through at such a young age mm -hmm. to, for her to still have hope in her heart amen was wonderful wonderful I love Zoe I just I just did Exactly. I agree. The children, it's like throughout the book, I was laughing out loud. Mm -hmm. The things that the kids would do and the things that they would say to each other. And it's like, oh, wow. You know, and the, <laughs> and the different comments, Amy, it was it was heart wrenching, but it was lighthearted at the same time. 
And yeah. I just love the fact the way the kids rallied around each other. But the seniors in the town, they knew it's like, OK, they'll work it out. You know, it's like when some um, what was the girl's name who Bernadine took in? Crystal. Crystal. Yeah. Crystal with her blonde hair. Right? Blonde Crystal, hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her blonde hair that needed to come out. But it, <laughs> I love the fact that the 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 mentors and the town just embrace them and they were all positioned perfectly. And I like the fact it's like Trent, he worked on cars and who did he get? The boy who was the car oh, thief. Cars, yeah. <laughs> car thief. I loved it. <laughs> exactly. That was awesome. Absolutely. And then where Zoe she saw that piano mm -hmm. and she was like, she made sure she saw where that piano was going and she walked over to that couple. Mm -hmm. And I love that she chose them because that wasn't the child they were supposed to get. But then the person who was the, the gentleman who was the former um, military, he mm -hmm. needed to get the one who needed to exercise some more, the one with asthma. Who's like, well, yeah, I can't. it's like he needed <laughs> that was perfect. But I just loved it. I mean, it just made me laugh. And then with that pig. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, that, that pig. <laughs> Imagine somebody in a town the Peter. mayor and yeah, that pig Peter. and that whole situation with his wife and she left because the pig meant more to him than she did. I was like, oh, good grief. That was hilarious. Okay. And um, actually, everyone was kind of, uh, all the families were kind of dysfunctional. But as a group, they helped each other, you know, and uh, the elders helped, uh, the young kids, you know, helped them. They all came together to uh, work it out on their, um, how did you feel about that portion of it? I think they helped, they helped heal each other. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. From the kids yeah. to the adults and just opening the communication all the way around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think somebody I, think I can't was, remember who they said uh, it was like utopia and it was because of how they were able to navigate problems and like like you said help and assist each other it was intergenerational and they listened and they had that respect and it was, it was like a utopia utopia that you would dream of but it's not really happening but in that for that time period it was a utopia for the for the foster kids, for the foster parents, for the older generation who thought their time was going to die when they died. And it was like a rebirth. So it was awesome. Mm -hmm. I think it gave everybody a purpose. Mm -hmm. And hope. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. and hope. Mm -hmm. Especially when you discovered that even the the adults and the elders, they all were broken too. They had right. broken mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, it was interesting, you know, the focus was on the kids, but in the end, as the the story evolved, then you learn that these adults, they had broken hearts too, mm -hmm. and they needed to be healed and mended. And so the, the kids, the kids was like a dose of medicine for them. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about Zoe, how, you know, she picked her parents, but she also healed uh, her parent, uh, Romy. Yes. Right. Yeah, she had quit singing and and she got her to sing again, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of ironic. It was, you know, it was a layer upon a layer upon a layer of many, many stories. You know, mm -hmm. we're introduced to this town that's broken, but yet all these people in the town are also equally broken. Right. You know? Um and so everybody on some level needed to find a piece of love and some peace and some mercy, some grace. So um, it was an amazing, amazing story. And what did you think about, um, was that Perel? Perel was the banker that was going to take uh, foreclose yes. on everybody. It was slimy. 
He was yes. slimy, mm-hmm. very slimy uh, yes. there. Um, and he was, um, what was Cletus's dad's name? Uh, oh, gosh. Riley. Got his, Riley. 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 Yes. Riley. Him and uh, Riley. Uh, they were, were scandalous. They were ski. They were terrible. They were, mm-hmm. <laughs> they were awful. And they had been doing this for years. years. And the bank was already defunct. They had already been closed, but nobody knew he had been robbing these people. And he would right. have continued to do it. Mm-hmm. They. To me, that was the most powerful uh, part of the book when she turned yes. around and called up her friend and said, buy that bank. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> they dropped the mic. <laughs> I loved it. By the bank. I know. You're I gonna, loved her. You're gonna threaten me and play games. I'm gonna show you real power. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I love her network of friends. They yeah. were some kind of. I mean, these. What did they call themselves? The bottom like, women. Bottom, yeah, bottom women. women. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I was uh, like, get down with your bad selves. It's like, <laughs> oh, they were. I when, mean, it was just so creative. Yeah. When they yeah. explained the whole concept, I was cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't and, underestimate the power. That's right. And her friend gave her the jet because she didn't need it. So she gave her the jet mm-hmm. that she went and got the kids, you know. Yeah. You know, I thought it was very enlightening when, you know, they didn't want, know what to expect when she was coming. They had no description of her. And so when she came, you know, everybody's mouth dropped, hung open. And uh, I love that she, like we talked about, she was humble. She just came in. And and in that first town meeting, they she let them know, oh, I'm not to be played with. Don't don't get me being a black woman. Uh, me, uh, get you twist. Get, don't get me twisted. And even when somebody said, well, what makes you want to? Uh, uh, have these foster kids and she said my master's in social work I said well now <laughs> a lot of them had education there though mm-hmm. yes. Trent was an Trent. engineer mm-hmm. yes engineer. Malachi was Malachi a was a veterinarian Lily wow. had education yeah they had a lot of education there which was good and the teacher uh, had a teacher there and I, I love the way they punish the boys with having to paint the fence. <laughs> oh, That's a, out, out of Tom Sawyer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but I, Tammy, I, you have I, a beautiful I, smile on your face. We want to hear something from you because I know you got something good up your sleeves. <laughs> to me? To me? Yes. <laughs> She's been sitting there looking at us and just smiling it, the whole just, time. I'm just really tired. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was a, I mean, an unbelievably good book. I'm, I'm reading it a second time. I enjoyed it so much. Well, the, there's 11 books in that series. And so yeah. that story continues, so, you know. I that's know. that's why I'm, I'm being quiet. I've, re- I've read all of them. They're wonderful. <laughs> really? I've read it's... them all and I'm going through them again for the second time. I'm on book five now. Oh my goodness. So is this number one? This is yes. number one. Number one. Oh, number okay. one. excellent. Mm-hmm. And then ladies, just like... so you know, years ago we read one of her books. It was Indigo. Tammy, remember when oh, yeah. we read Indigo? I was, I was trying to figure out because I was thinking mm-hmm. that name, Beverly Jenkins. Thank it was you. Book we read. Mm-hmm. That was exactly. so good. That was phenomenal a book. book. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm glad because you know, at no place in this book does it say anything about it being a series, and it's like the first. Mm -hmm. It's a series. There's eleven books in the series, and it continues on with the story. So okay, all right. More more, more about the story. Yeah, the development of the town, the new people that's coming into the town, the role they play. Oh. Mm -hmm. And when it ended, I was really sorry to see it end. I know. Okay, uh, good. Well, I'm glad so to The know second that. book is a second helping. It's called a the second, second helping. helping. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's the second book on Thank there, you. but it continues on on there, which is good. Um, let's see. Um, what about the phrases, the quotes she put in there on there, like, 
uh, when much is given, much is expected. Mm -hmm. I think I that's love that scripture reference. I, I loved her quote uh, yeah. because sometimes we don't um, utilize everything we have. Um, and it may not be money. It could be something else. It may not be monetary, but there, there mm -hmm. are different things that we can do to help um, and lend our talents in different ways. And I think, uh, for example, Trent showed that he could use his engineering degree. There are so many different ways. Um, what is it, Lily? Was it Lily? Who was the one that was the secretary and that was Lily Fontaine? It was Lily Fontaine. Fontaine. Yes. yes. Yeah, it sounds and I like loved a her name. name. <laughs> I, I loved her name. She was very organized and she helped. So everyone, when much is given, you know, much is expected. And um, we should be able to do something with that. And, and everyone in that town did. Even the kids kind of stepped up to the plate. Yeah. Yeah, even though it was a little misguided, <laughs> they wanted to help out Christo. So yes. they yes. ended up still on the car of the, uh, the truck, you know. But, but the interesting thing he said, but, you know, we, we said those vows, we're family. Mm -hmm. So on some level, they, they get it, you know. Um, uh, the judge, when she had to pray, <laughs> the, the yes. first judge, she had to pray about it. And, and what happened? He knocked himself out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. He fell out. <laughs> they had to get another judge. He, that was common. He tripped on his robes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. On there. And that was a blessing. That was yeah. a blessing. It really was. It really was. Mm -hmm. And you know, he... another another thing that I thought about, um, I forgot his name, the, the banker, the ex-banker who was a swindler. Perel, yeah. Yeah, Perel. you know, he was such, a, you know, it's interesting to me that the pig I'm ended up play. killing him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you know, my grandmother said, you lie with pigs, you might die with them. So he died. <laughs> exactly. So, exactly. That was hilarious. That really was. A 600 pound pig living in your house. And oh, he had so no awful. idea. The wife was, she cleaned up everything all the time. He wasn't even aware. And then when she left, I love the fact that she got courage to leave him. But I mean, yeah. you know, but then he wound up. <laughs> uh, anyway, but, <laughs> but I'm glad that she had the courage because, and then, but the sad thing is she lost her home. She that was given, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. because of that. I mean, they had to condemn that house because right. of that. Right. And all, she lost all her money, too, because he had been stealing her inheritance the whole time. Mm -hmm. So exactly. she ended up with no money. But they said that he took like 25000 So I'm hoping that she still had some funds left. Uh, yeah. I'm hoping. Yeah. Okay, my last question is, how did the book make you feel? Inspired. Yes. Yeah. And hopeful. Yes. Hopeful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Encouraged. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even when you think your glass is half empty, mm -hmm. it's really half full. Right. So when you think there's nothing, there is still something. I, I feel like I would want I want to I want to visit uh, <laughs> Henry, the Adams. Henry Adams. Yeah, I would want because so many things that went on in the town are very much like that community that I lived in growing up. And you know, in these times, we've kind of lost that. And you know, everybody helping everybody or knowing everybody's business or. You know, just that 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 sense of community. So I would like to go there and see what it's like. That exactly. sounds like a good field trip. Yes. When I read this book, when I read this book, I thought about the town of Allensworth. Allensworth. And I know Sadie, yes. your family mm -hmm. uh, was from a, uh, a part of your family helped start Allensworth, mm -hmm. and it made me think: Did they go through this when they started this this all black town? And 
and I just was just kept thinking back to Allensworth and what it was like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My grandfather wouldn't move there though. He gave all his money to his brothers and they moved there because he said that Colonel Allen was a swindler. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I just want to throw something out. It it just came to my mind. This hasn't come up in our discussion. Our veterinarian, whoa, was he like something else? He was a ladies' man, wasn't he? Yes, he, he was. was. Malachi. Yes. Malachi. <laughs> Malachi. Malachi. Oh, my. And he liked Miss Bernadine because in the initially, I kind of thought maybe there would be something between Trent and Bernadine. Mm-hmm. But then as things went on, of course, he and Lily, and I'm glad that they were reconnecting in the book. So that was really sweet because it's mm-hmm. like, oh, she did him dirty. He was like, a look, you should always take the one who you think is the nerd. That's the good That's one right. for you. But, you know, she was embarrassed. And, but I'm glad that they were able to mend that fence. But then I thought, look at Malachi. But I think he really realizes Bernadine is someone who he should be with you know in that versus playing with all these young girls but mm-hmm. i don't know if anything's going to come of that and don't share or spill any beans i don't want to know <laughs> but anyway i just thought that yeah. i can just picture him being a very handsome charismatic man mm-hmm. and educated you know so uh-huh. it's like, you know, but and anyway. his mother called him snake oil <laughs> <laughs> yes i know <laughs> your own mother calls you that oh yeah God. i know <laughs> His mother was hilarious. She was. She was good. I liked her character. Yeah, she was my favorite character. I liked her strength and just don't play with me attitude. I love that she's a storyteller too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's a keeper of her people's history. Or a keeper, Mm -hmm. story keeper. Mm -hmm. Well, that one um, uh, foster parent I can't remember. He was a military man. Mm-hmm. Yes. He had he had a really deep history, I guess, and went way back there, you know, in the town. I guess his uh-huh. dad, grandfather, great, great, great grandfather had been a, a sheriff or something. Sure. Mm-hmm. So, yep. uh, I thought that was that really made him feel more connected to the town. Yeah, because he didn't want to move there in the first place. Right. And that really gave him a connection. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, but he did it for his wife. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because he said all those years she followed him from base to base to base mm-hmm. and never asked anything. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It was her turn. It was mm-hmm. her turn. Exactly. So you can really tell he wasn't a selfish person. I right. Like that. Like that. Yeah. A lot of strong so many, characters in the book, you know, in terms yeah. of their character being strong. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, and that's it. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Cindy. All right, Zadie. Well, Thank we you, are ladies. Free. Thank, Thank you, you, Zadie. This <laughs> book was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love it. I read it in love two it. days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. So Zadie, thank you for turning us on to Bring on the Blessings, the first of a series of books by Beverly Jenkins. And this has been a phenomenal book club. Thank 